East Sparta Church of God. Are you excited to be here this morning? Did you come to praise the Lord this morning? Come on as you stand with us. Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. I'm so glad that we serve a God who breathes life into these dry and weary bones. You know you may come to the end of yourself, but you will never come to the end of him. Y'all worship him this morning.
Church of God. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord, and we are so glad that you have made the choice to come and worship with us this morning. And to our guests, we want to express a special welcome to you. We are thankful to have you, uh, and we just invite and encourage you to mind the Lord, get in a service, and worship freely with us this morning. At this time, we're going to ask our ushers, if they would, to come forward so we may receive our morning's tithes and offerings. And for those of you who may be new or those of you who are watching live stream or maybe you just don't like to carry cash, we got multiple ways that you can give here at East Sparta. You can give here physically, but you can also visit our website at www.eastspartacog.com and give there electronically or just simply text the word GIVE to 84321. Brother Titus, will you bless the offering this morning? Amen. Amen. A few announcements this morning. Um, 
we are still uh, looking for people. Still looking for people to help. Um, any church you go to is made up of many members. We are all members of one body. And for this body to operate optimally, we need all members serving their role. And God has a role for you. God has a job for all of us to do. I encourage you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 um, and pray about it. And we need, we need people. We need members of this body to fill in the gaps and to help. Specifically, we're looking for some nursery ministry volunteers for Sunday morning worship um, during the worship service and Wednesday midweek connection on a rotation type schedule. After you read 1 Corinthians 12 and after you pray about it, please go see Sister Patsy Roberts and talk to her about this. Um, I believe you'll be blessed, and I know that you'll be a blessing to others. I promise you that. Uh, February the 12th, our PM service. We're going to still have a PM service that starts at 5. Um, Super Bowl. We're going to have a Super Bowl party, so we're going to have our service in the fellowship hall. Uh, we'll still start at 5, uh, have some singing, have, uh, have a, a devotion, a message, uh, but then we're going we're gonna to enjoy the game, enjoy each other's company, have some fellowship, bring some finger foods, uh, and have a good time. Don't worry, we will turn it off during halftime, so you won't have to see any of that mess. Um, we'll, we'll have uh, some more singing or another devotion, <laughs> but you don't have to worry about that. But please come and, and have, have, a, have a fun night of fellowship with us. And ladies, uh, a bunco night is scheduled for Thursday, February 23rd at 6 p.m. Bring finger foods for a night of fun and fellowship. Again, that's Thursday, February 23rd at 6. Psalm 72, verses 18 and 19 says this, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. I hope this morning you have come into this place expecting and looking for a wondrous thing because God, that's all he does. He specializes in wondrous things and he's got something in store for you this morning. So if you would stand with us again this morning as we continue to bless the Lord. Give him praise in his house this morning. How many of you are glad that you have a new name written down in glory? Come on, put your hands together. Sing it with us. I was once a sinner, but I came. Oh, there's a new name 
the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have saved us and written our name down in the Lamb's book of life. Father, that you paid for salvation with the ultimate sacrifice of your Son. Thank you, Father, that you are still alive and well. That your Son stands on your right hand and advocates for us. Thank you, Lord, that you don't cast us aside whenever we fall short. Whenever our sinful nature would so quickly overtake us and we would succumb to temptation. God, your word declares that you are faithful and just to forgive those who ask forgiveness and confess their sins. So this morning, Lord, I just ask that there's anything within us that we need to confess, anything that we need to ask forgiveness for, God, that we would lay it at your feet this morning, that we would confess it, Lord, and that you would cast it as far as the east is from the west. And God, that you would come and move in a mighty and powerful way. Lord, that the atmosphere would be stirred by our praise. God, that you would descend in this house, that you would dwell amongst your people, that you would come and heal, restore, and set free those who are held captive. God, we believe the promises of your word. We believe that if you said it, it will be so. So, Lord, come and do it again in this house this morning. We are here for you, humbly bowed, in recognition of your sovereignty and authority. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. testify with us this morning. Will your promise still stand? Your promise
is for you. God just brought to my heart, you've had a lot of loss. You've had a lot of loss lately. You've had a lot of loss in the past. He's still got his hand on you. Keep your eyes on him. Don't look to the left nor the right. He knows you. He sees you. And he loves you. And we're praying for you. Walking around the
lift your hands all over this sanctuary. Say, Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. You've been there when nobody else has. Lord, I thank you for getting me up this morning. Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. I thank you, dear Lord, even for your correction. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. When others would leave, Lord, you are there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, while you're standing with me, I want you to go to the Word of God in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 through 16. Again, our vision for this year is being a modern day Acts church. How many of you know that being a modern day Acts church, we still believe in the power of divine healing? Oh, somebody help me here. Glory to God. Even in the church of God, in our declaration of faith, we still believe in divine healing. Amen. The laying on of hands and seeing the Lord minister through people. I'm not saying that God doesn't heal through doctors. He does. Lord God, in medicine, I believe that is one form of which God heals through. But I want to tell you, every healing that comes, comes through the power of God. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know this morning who's here. Not saying I don't know your name. I ain't going to see now. But your condition. But when you walked in this place, when you made a decision to get up and come here this morning, God placed you in this service for a divine purpose, for a divine suddenly. He put you in this place this morning because he's got something for you. And if you've walked in here, not just with a physical need of healing, But how many of you know that there's some folk that need emotional healing? There's some folks that are bleeding to death on the inside because of things that have been done to them through the years. They're bleeding to death. Emotionally. Because of things that's been said to them and done to them by people close to them. There's people that need healing mentally. Spiritually. Spiritually. So when I talk about healing, I don't just talk about the physical man. I'm talking about the whole man. Because how many of you know that when the Lord healed, he said time and time again, do you want to be made whole? Because he understands that we are more than just body. We are mind, body, and spirit. Glory to God. So he wants the whole man healed. Acts chapter 5, starting in verse 12, the Word of God says, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities, to Jerusalem, bringing the sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. 
Now, that's not my word. That's God's word. They were all. Somebody shout all. all. Look at your neighbor and say all. all. Point at your neighbor and say he's talking to you. You don't have to walk out of here the same way you come in because all were healed. I want to preach this morning, glory to God. Modern, in a modern day Acts church, God still heals. God still heals. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before your presence this morning, we give you praise, and we give you glory, and we give you honor. Lord, as we come into this assembly this morning, I pray, God, that the, through the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you step into this place. Walk through these aisles and up and down, Lord, uh, of these aisles and through the pews where we are. Father, I pray, God, if there's any this morning that's come in with a sickness, Lord, or with an ailment, Lord, no matter what it is, Lord, physical, mental, emotional, Lord, spiritual, whatever area of their life needs a healing, Father, let them know that you still heal. Lord, you, there's still sin, signs and wonders and miracles among your people. Father, I pray, God, do it in this house today. Lord, send those. And let people understand and know you're still as powerful today as you ever was in the Word of God. Lord, back then, we give you praise, and Lord, we give you glory and honor for it all. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. amen. Glory to God. You may be seated. Glory to God. One more time, look at your neighbor and say, God still heals. Church, our God is still in the miracle working business. He still performs miracles. He still heals and still does things that cannot be understood through natural means. Hebrews chapter 2 and 4 says, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Can I tell you that every service that we attend, every day we get up, God moves according to his will, not on our timetable. God moves as he wants to. And, and come on, what we've got to do is understand and get a, get a mental capacity about us and a heart believing about us that God still does what his word says he'll do. Amen. Amen. We've got to come to that place to say, Lord, if your word said it, I believe it and I'm going to see it. God still heals. You see, the God that lived in the book of Acts is still the same today. T.L. Osborne once said, The purpose of a spirit-filled life is to demonstrate the supernatural power of our living God so that unsaved multitudes will abandon their dead gods to call upon the name of the Lord and be delivered. Come on now, I'm telling you. Lord, God, See, we think that signs and wonders and miracles we think that that's for us in the church today. It is not for us. Listen to me. They still happen, but what they are for is to show those folks who are unsaved that God is still real. Come on. I'm telling you, I'm looking at some saved folk in here that ought to already know that God is real. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, listen, I mean, I'm looking at some folks today that have been saved for a long, for a pretty good while. Come on now. And you ought to already know that God is real. Amen. When the preacher says that God does miracles, it ought to be yea and amen. When we say that God heals, it ought to be yea and amen. When we say that God delivers, it ought to be yea and amen. When we say that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, it ought to be yea and amen. When the word of God says we can cast out devils, it ought to be yea and amen. Why? Because we know that God is real. It should not be a skepticism thing in the house of God for the children of God who have been saved. Oh, it's easy for us to believe in salvation because the person sitting next to you is probably saved. But glory to God, and we've seen that over and over. But where it comes into the doubting mind of the child of God today and the regular and the individuals in the house of God is because we don't, we don't see the signs and the wonders and the miracles 
angels like they did in the word of God and in the early church in the 18 and 1900s at Azusa Street and over in Camp Creek. We don't see these things like they did anymore. But I want to tell you, we're still serving the same God. And if we really believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, you have got to believe that he still does miracles. See, I debated with God on whether to preach this message or not. Because it's even come to the place in the church of God that we're doubting that he still does what he used to do. Oh, come on now. I've got me a brand new song. That first song y'all sung, glory to God. How many of you know he can make dry bones live again? Come on, how many even know that he can make a dead man walk if he wants to? Oh, come on now. I read the stories of Smith Wigglesworth and D.L. Moody and all of these uh, 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 preachers. Glory to God, the great generals of the church. I read all these stories of uh, A.A. Allen and all him of the healing ministries of Oral Roberts and all of these things that happen. I want to tell you, folks, uh, that same God is still here today. It doesn't matter what you've walked in here with. You can leave different. You can leave whole in the name of Jesus. Do I have somebody that will stand up and praise the Lord with me and say God you are still the God of healing I'm looking for some folks this morning that say I'm going to receive you see I know not everybody in here is going to catch this I'm not stupid I know not everybody's going to get it because nobody, no, uh, not, not everybody wants it. I understand that. I'm not naive. I've been at this a long time. But I'm looking for those folks today that's come in here hungry. I'm looking for some desperate folk in here today. Have I got any desperate people in here today? Because let me tell you, when you're in a desperate position, you're in a good place to be healed. Because when you're in that desperate place, let me tell you what happens. Lord God, you don't care what anybody thinks. You don't care what anybody says. Not that you don't love them, glory to God, but you don't let something hinder you from receiving, Lord God, from the Lord. I'm telling you, folks, when you're in a desperate place, Lord God, you will take the Word of God for what it is, the Word of God, and you'll start believing the Word of God for exactly for what it is and for what it says, and you will be to cry out whether anybody else cries out with you whether anybody else lays hands on you or not you'll begin to cry out and say Lord I've come in here with a desperation I've come in here with a need and I'm not leaving till I receive in the name of Jesus you see I still believe that God still heals oh hallelujah let me tell you, Lord God, when I read this scripture, it just leaped out at me. Lord God, can I tell you, I've only got two points today. Two points, and I'm going to be out of your hair. Glory to God. But first of all, I want you to understand that one thing that God still does, he still does signs and wonders. Amen. Uh, signs and wonders. He still does it. Uh, Luke gives us a summary of what's going on at the time of the early church. Uh, God was using the apostles uh, to show his mighty power and miraculous power. Luke tells us that the apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people and all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple. You see, this is the kind of language used in the New Testament to describe the activity of the early church and I still believe it ought to be the language of the church today. Lord God, where signs and wonders are relevant where signs and wonders are, are still being performed, Lord God, and people are seeing the working of God amongst us. You see, it goes right along with what Mark said, or Jesus said in Mark. Glory to God. 
Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere. Look at that. They went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Glory to God. You know, I'm reminded of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I don't know why we've come to the place, glory to God, in our society that we want to pull in. And I'm not talking about education. Please don't think that. I love education. Glory to God, I love learning. But why do we want some preacher to stand in the pulpit and talk to us in $100 words that we don't understand and then walk out and think we've been in a dynamic service that is where we've sat through it and nothing's happened? Why do we think that's church? Where's the old country preachers? Glory to God that used to know how to get down on their face. And cry out to God and seek the Lord again. Where are some old-fashioned preachers, glory to God, that used to hide their self away in their closet before they get up in that pulpit because they understood the sacredness of this place right here that didn't take it for granted, Lord God, but they understood the calling that they had on their life when they stood before their people, Lord God, and understood, I've got to give a word from the Lord. This is not my word. This is His word. And His word, when it goes forth, is going to go forth with power. It's going to go forth with signs and things are going to be done and people's lives are going to be changed. Why have we come to that place today that we want to put people in the pulpit that have no idea what the Holy Spirit's all about? Glory to God. You see, the Word of God says that when they preached, they went out preaching that the Lord proved the word of God with signs and wonders. Where, where's the apostle Paul's at? Glory to God. Like 1 Corinthians chapter 2 who said, I didn't come among you. Wanting to know anything among you. I don't want to know your problems. I don't want to know your situation. It doesn't mean that Paul didn't love them. Paul did love them. Glory to God. He ministered to them. He loved them. But he said, listen to me. I don't want to know your problems. Because if you start telling me your problems, then you think that I can solve your problems. And I've come to tell you today, I can't solve nothing for you. Glory to God. I'm just a man, a human being, just like you are. He said, I didn't want to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Glory to God. He said, I didn't come before you with men's knowledge, with men's education, with big enticing words of man's wisdom that your faith would stand in what I say. I didn't come like that. He said, but I come in here with the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit that your faith might stand in that. Glory to God. Let us as the church uh, get back to walking in our faith uh, by the demonstration of the Holy Spirit one more time. Amen. Glory to God. You see, the, the apostles were continually to be filled. They were continuing to be filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and His power, preaching the Word of God uh, with the anointing uh, of the Spirit and having the Word confirmed with signs and wonders. Can I tell you, folks, you go through the book of Acts. Glory to God. You know what one, the word wonders mean? The word wonders, I looked that up in the Greek. And it refers to supernatural manifestations of God's power. Get this. In other words, the wonders have less to do with people doing them and more to do with God doing them. All God is looking for is for some surrendered people and some surrendered vessels that the Holy Spirit can move through. Come on now. Glory to God. You see, what we have today in this church and in this world ought to be a continuation of the ministry of Jesus Christ. You see, He had told them in John 14 and 12, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to my Father. 
You see, they just didn't have, uh, they did just what Jesus had predicted. Uh, they were doing the same works, uh, but in greater quality, quantity, not quality. You see, just as he healed people, now the apostles were laying on of hands and were healing through the power of the Holy Spirit that had flowed through them. Glory to God, in verse 14 of our scripture, he said, Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. Can I tell you, folks, Lord God, last year we talked about preparing for the harvest. Lord God, this year we're still talking about preparing for the harvest, even though being an Acts church, I'm going to tell you, because let me tell you what goes along with evangelism. Signs and wonders follow the believers, and those signs and wonders bring people into the house of God and they find out God is real and they give their life to him because of it you see we've talked and 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 we've talked about power glory to God and nobody's seen any it's time for the talking to stop and for the doing to be done Hear me. Glory to God, Luke tells us that the church continued to grow by leaps and bounds. He says more and more people were coming to the Lord, both men and women. Scores of people were coming to have faith in and believe in Jesus. You see, when I consider the signs and wonders of the book of Acts, I'm impressed with the relationship between miracles and the growth of the church. I call that power evangelism. What are you talking about? You can go through the book of Acts. You can go through the, come on, the complete book of Acts. And you will see several, several references, uh, glory to God, to where there was signs and wonders, there was growth. Uh, you find in Acts chapter 2 and verse 43. Uh, glory to God. Then you find it in Acts chapter 3. Uh, then you find it in Acts chapter 4 and verse 4. Then you find it in Acts chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Uh, then five, uh, verse 23 through 31. Uh, then you find it in Acts chapter 1, uh, verse, uh, uh, verse t- Acts chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 16. Then 12 through 14, where I'm at here. Then you find it in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. And then you go through verse 8 of chapter 6. Lord God, then you go through Acts chapter 8 and verse 6, 7 and 8 and verse 12. Lord God, then you can keep on going. Hallelujah, in Acts. You'll find Acts 9, 32 through 35. Lord God, then you can keep on going. Amen. To Acts 39, verse 36 through 42. Then Acts 13, 16 to 12. Then You go to Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 20. I'm telling you, with all of these things that I've just said and given you, I didn't take time to read it, but you hear me. Go back and look at it for yourself. When the church is where God wants them to be, in the midst of the power that God wants them to be, things are going to happen. Revival is going to take place, and people are going to be saved and set free in the name of Jesus. If you want my notes on that, I'll give them to you. Glory to God. Listen, when we do God's work in God's way, big things are going to happen. Hear me. You Smith Wigglesworth said, people don't expect to see signs and wonders today. As the disciples saw them of old, has God changed or has our faith waned so that we're not expecting the greater works that Jesus promised? Where are we at? You see, we just believe God for signs and wonders. Had a woman call me up the other day. Did have a woman had a woman call me up the other day. She said, Pastor, said I've got a friend that's dealing with demon possession. She thinks her daughter is demon possessed. I said, Okay. And uh, I said, Well, why have you went over there and prayed? And she goes to another church. She said, no. She said, well, yeah, we have. She said, well, I took my pastor, and we went over there, and we, we prayed, but nothing happened. And she said, I, I talked to a former pastor uh, of East Sparta, and I won't mention his name. You know who he is. And he said to send you. He said, you're the one that needs to go. Because you're the most Holy Ghost filled preacher he's seen in a while. (laughs) 
And I just stopped her right there. I said, listen. I said, you're trying to tell me that he told you to tell me to go because he thinks I've got a calling for that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have the calling for that, she said. I said, you just need to sit back. And let me give you a, a, a lesson here for a minute. I had her on my, on my phone in my vehicle. So I, I, just, I just went through and had a little Bible study with her. I said, let me tell you something. I said, there is not a calling, glory to God, or a ministry of just casting out devils. Who taught you that? Who told you that? But let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said in Mark chapter 16 and verse 17 and 18, These signs shall follow them that believe. And I just had to stop right there. I said, are you a believer? She said, well, yes, I am. I said, then this is for you, baby. These signs shall follow them that believe. Now, this is Jesus talking. This ain't a disciple talking. This is Jesus talking because the words are in red. Jesus said, these signs will follow them that believe. They will cast out devils in my name. I mean, he gets right to the hard stuff right off the bat. I mean, because he puts, they'll lay on hands at the end of the sentence, at the end of the verse. Because he wants us to understand signs and wonders are real. And signs and wonders ought to follow every believer. So I sat there and I said, look. I said, and the more she began to talk to me about this young lady that they thought had a demon. Glory to God. I thought, there, there is no, that according to Scripture, when I look at the Scripture and I hear what you're telling me, I said, this young lady ain't got a devil. She's just lazy. She won't get up out of bed, Pastor. She's just lazy. She won't do her laundry. She's just lazy. She won't take care of her kids. She's just lazy. But see, we've, got, we've come to the place today, Sister Melissa, that we blame the devil for a lot of stuff he ain't even got a hand on. Because I want to tell you, you can absolutely tell when somebody's got a devil. I've dealt with that before. And when that, when that moment has come to pass, I want to tell you what's happened. The Holy Spirit has supernaturally stepped in and give us the ability to lay hands on that individual and see that devil cast out because these signs will follow them that believe. Praise God. Somebody give the Lord some praise. Glory to God. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll be able to handle snakes. I don't like that part. If they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay, be able to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Listen, Jesus said that these signs would be a characteristic of a believer. Hear me. Glory to God. And my last point is God still heals people. He still heals people. Look at what it said in verse 15 and 16. So that they brought, they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least mm, the shadow of Peter might pass, passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem. Bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. Listen, church. Glory to God. When the church begins to be filled with the Holy Ghost and ministering in the power of the Word, I'm going to tell you, Word's going to spread that there's a church over in Sparta that still believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. My friend, I'm going to tell you, that's going to be a, the Word's going to spread that something's happening over at East Sparta Church of God because there's a group of believers over there that wants the power of the Holy Spirit moving amongst them. That some of, come on, the Word's going to spread that revival's breaking out, that souls are being saved. That that bodies are being touched. That devils are being cast out. Word's going to spread that the Holy Ghost is falling in this church. 
That's what happened here. Word spread. Glory to God. Listen to me. Look at the faith of these people. Look at the faith of these people. They had so much faith. Glory to God. In the power of God. They said it like this. If I can't get to Peter, maybe just his shadow will fall on me. If I can't get to Peter, maybe I can just lay him close enough to get his shadow. I'm telling you, that's anointing, folks. To be, to be anointed plumb down to your shadow. <laughs> Where's my eyelashes? Glory to God, that's anointed to the bone. Glory to God. Come on. I'm telling you, folks, we got to get anointed again. Amen. Fully anointed. Amen. That even when the shadow fell on them, amen, they had that much faith. I may not be able to get up there and touch and reach out and touch Peter. He may not be, uh, to be able to reach out and touch me. But if I can just get into some portion of where he's at, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit and the anointing is going to work. Come on now. Folks, we need to get some folks in the vicinity of where the Holy Spirit is. It's moving, glory to God. He still heals people. Oh, glory to God. You see, they came. They were coming in great numbers, sick people, and were laid in the streets and on beds. Glory to God. That's power. When you think about it, that's power. Even the shadow. Look at what it said. And we're all healed, verse 16. The word of, of what God was doing began to spread. And crowds of people began to come from all the surrounding towns and villages around. You see, we should also notice it wasn't just physical ailments that people were being healed from. They were being healed spiritually. People who were possessed by evil spirits were coming and being set free. Glory to God. We talk about that scripture all the time. Over in James chapter 5. You need to come on, brother. i got to lay in this thing. Glory to God. We talk about that scripture. We always say, is there any sick among you? How many of you have heard that scripture? Any sick among you? Quoted all the time. But do we really understand what it says? Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church to come and pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And when you pray such a prayer and you offer it in, prayer, in faith, it will heal the sick. And the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sin, you will be forgiven. Listen to me. Mary Baker Eddy said this, said the prayer that transforms the sinner and heals the sick is an absolute faith that things are possible with God. So I'm going to ask you before I close, do you have an absolute faith in God today that he can heal you? Do you have an absolute faith in God that when you step up here, because I'm going to get some elders in this place to stand up here with me this morning. When you step up here and you've got a problem, you've got a need, you need healed, do you have absolute faith that when you step up here, that when I get done here, I'm going to be whole? Pastor, God don't heal instantly anymore. Let me tell you, my six-year-old granddaughter, glory to God, Tuesday night, Wednesday, no, it wasn't, it's Tuesday, Tuesday night, had basketball practice. Mama dropped her, our other granddaughter, her sister off, two years old, dropped her off with us. She was there. Sister Lori wasn't feeling well. Sick. That grandbaby of mine looked at her mama and said, Mama, 
turn down the radio. I got to have a talk with Jesus. And that baby in the back seat, sitting in that car seat, who loves the Lord with all of her heart, began to cry out and pray to God and said, Lord, I want you to heal my Mimi in 15 seconds. I went and picked, that, picked those two babies up Friday from school. Reese sitting in her car seat in the back of my truck said, Pa, the Lord didn't answer my prayer. I said, now wait a minute. I prayed for the Lord to heal her in 15 seconds. I said, let me tell you something what the Lord did that you didn't see. I said, the minute you prayed... God began, began the healing process because the minute you prayed, your Mimi started turning around. Your prayer, your simple prayer of faith started the process of turning her sickness around. And I'm telling you, by the next day, by the, the next evening, it was all gone. It was done. Ain't nobody lay a hand on her, but that six-year-old with the faith greater than most adults prayed and changed the course of her sickness. And I've come to tell you today, that same God that healed her can heal you. You just got to have that childlike faith. You see, the problem with a lot of adults today is we've lived life. You see, we've lived life. We've been through some garbage. We've been through some hot messes. We've been let down. We've struggled. We prayed and we felt like God didn't answer. So it gets a little bit more difficult for us as we go on to believe God like we ought to. But I've come to tell you today, by listening to my granddaughter, restored something in me. God still heals, folks. The question is, do you believe him enough to do it? Let me tell you, God gets no glory out of you being sick. Do you understand that? God gets no glory out of you being sick. God gets no glory out of us walking around whining about what we're going through. But God gets glory when we are healed and we can lift our hands and magnify the Lord and give a testimony that God heal me, glory to God. That's when God gets the glory. So do I have anybody as you stand in this place today? Give me, some guy, give me some elders up here. I don't care, men or women. I'm going to tell you tonight, this morning. Come on, if you believe in the power of prayer, I want you standing up here with me. Right here. Come on. Come on. Come on, stand here with me. Come here. Stand here. God says you call for the elders of the church. Anoint them with oil. Pray the prayer of faith over them. That prayer of faith will heal them. up to you because God ain't going to take nothing you don't offer him. God ain't going to take nothing away from you you don't want gone. You 
You stay sick if you want to. That's up to you. But I've come to tell you, God sent me in here today to have a divine healing service. That's what God sent me in here for. Divine healing service. Praise God. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Glory to God. Do something for me. Form a line right here. If you need healing, I want you to get in the line right here. Come here. Come here, Sister Lena. You're going to be number one. Glory to God. Right there. not just enough for us to believe you need to believe too and I need everybody in here glory to God if you're not up here helping us pray I need you believing back there that God's going to meet the need right here whatever it is hallelujah I'm believing some folks are going to walk out of your hill today how about you come on
telling you what you're seeing is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit right here. Glory. She couldn't hardly move the other day. The pain was so bad. God, I'm telling you, signs and wonders and miracles, folks. Glory to God.
as we praise your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. Like you. 
of the Lord today. Amen. Glory to God. I want to tell you, we've seen a manifestation of the Holy Spirit in this place. You say, what do you mean? I want to tell you, there's some folk got healed up here in this altar. That's signs and wonders and miracles. And you know what we're supposed to do with that information? We're supposed to go and tell. We're supposed to go and let people know, hey, let me tell you what happened to me at church today. Or let me tell you what happened to so-and-so at church today. Let me tell you, because something happened to somebody else don't mean you don't need to go and tell it. A testimony is a testimony, whether it happened to you or not. Amen. We all need to be showing and telling the goodness of God. Praise the Lord. I want you to come back tonight, 5 o'clock. Brother Kyle is going to be here with us. He's been preaching up in Knoxville this morning. Glory to God. But he'll be here this afternoon. Uh, be here at 5 to preach for us uh, in the evening service. He don't get a chance to be here much because he's either on the road driving or he's booked up in whatever. He's got several revivals. He's got a preach coming up in the next couple of months. So pray for him. Uh, the Lord's used him mightily. Praise God. But let's be dismissed. Amen. Father God, I pray a blessing upon this congregation. I pray, Lord, that you just bless each and every one of us, Lord, beyond measure. Father, I pray that your hand would be upon our lives. Father, I pray, dear God, that your face would shine upon our pathway, Lord, and we would hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. Father, I pray that you bless us coming in and going out. Make us the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. Father, I pray a blessing on our jobs. Lord, when we're in the shopping centers, wherever we may be, God, I pray that you just help us be a blessing to somebody. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, the glory, the honor for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.